Hello and welcome to my first tutorial video. I'm going to show you how I create these moth hairpins using TLS or liquid polymer clay. I'll list the products and supplies in the description below. One wonderful thing I discovered is you can actually print from your own home inkjet printer the images that you'd like to transfer onto the liquid clay. You do need, however, matte photo paper. Here's a hand drawing I did using Prisma fine point pens. I drew it on vellum paper and then I scanned it on my printer and printed it out on the matte photo paper. Here's an image of a vintage moth that I just embellished with some pens, some vintage beetles, and a seahorse skeleton. I'm going to try to make some earrings from. When trimming the edges, you don't have to do a great job. Leave a little bit so you have something to grab onto while applying the TLS. You can try other markers, but the ones that I like to use are the alcohol-based because they blend very well. And here I'll just show you my process. So the next step is our first layer of TLS. It's going to be a rather thin layer. Do two to three, sometimes four layers all together. So my instructions state uh, 275 degrees for 20 minutes. And this is the finished product of the first layer. Then you just want to trim the edges a little bit. This next step is optional. Um, I like to add glow-in-the-dark paint or pigments, especially to the Luna Moth. Here also I'm using some metallic paint. Alright, now we're on to our second layer. Alright, and now we're going to bake the second layer. 
Occasionally the corners may turn up a little after baking, so you can put a piece of photo paper down with another tile on top for a few minutes and it usually flattens them out really well. And trim the edges a bit. These tiles are at Home Depot or Lowe's. I think they're like two dollars. I like the ones that have the glossy top to them. They're easier to clean. So here I'm going to show you how I create the moth body for the Luna Moth. You can position the body on top, on the bottom of the wings. You can put the wings to the side or the corners of the body. You know, it's whatever you prefer. But this is my process. And I'm using translucent polymer clay by Sculpey. Here I'm creating some texture on the body, like making little hairs or indentations. Here I'm bringing out some metallic pigments. Chalk pastels are really fun to use on unbaked clay. I'll show you how I use them. Here I'm adding some more Perlex pigment powders. This one is one of my favorites. It's Interference Blue. I'll make sure to list that in the details below as well. This texturizing tool I actually made at home. It's super easy. You can just use some pins, wrap some clay around it, and bake it. Here I'm adding a moonstone, or getting ready to add a moonstone. This product is called Bacon Bond by Sculpey. It's helpful for securing stones. You can use it for attaching cooked clay to raw clay. Alright, so we're going to go and do our third layer. Here I've covered the vintage moth and I'm getting the sides of the Luna moth to secure the body to the wings. So all the products here are going to get a third layer. So next we're going to move on to making the pins. I'm using some Sculpey clay, some short wooden skewers, my pin tool, and then I have a little quartz crystal and an Oregon sunstone. This process can take a little while just because you want a nice smooth layer and good coverage over the pin. Uh, you want the tip to be pointy, and if you're adding a stone at the end, add a little extra clay.
so on this pin I actually ended up uh, breaking off a little bit of the end because I felt that the quartz crystal made it a bit too long On the vintage moth, I like the look of the body on the image. So here I'm just adding a bit of bacon bond and I'm going to put a bit of clay for the body on one side. So this hairpin you can actually wear reversible. You can wear it both ways. So here I just wanted to mention how much I decided to break off on this particular pin. Not very much, just um, enough so the quartz crystal didn't make it look too long. Alright, so now we have two finished pins and I'm going to texturize a little bit with the pin tool. I added a little pigment powder to the vintage moth body and now I'm going to add a little bit to the pins. Okay, so next we're going to do some glaze. It dries rather quickly, so you don't have to wait too long between layers. I suggest doing at least three layers because these are really thin pins and, you know, they're going to be pulled in and out of the hair a lot and you want them to be pretty strong. Here I'm using a metallic gold pen. I like the way it looks at the tip of the pins and I also use it to accent the wings. So on this moth, I'm gonna put a little bit more metallic translucent pearlescent coverage and you know it's just a matter of preference here but this is what i like this is actually one of my favorite colors it's by lumiere the metallic acrylic number 568 it's pearlescent white and it kind of has this moonlight glow Alright, so next I personally like to take a file and just kind of smooth out the edges. If you don't have a file, that's okay. Alright, so next we're going to want to put um, some protective glaze. One of the things I found works really well is a combination of the Sculpey glaze and the Lumiere 568 pearlescent white. So this is optional as well. I like to add a little varnish spray to my wings. Here I'm just covering up the 
moonstone, so I don't varnish the moonstone. And if you do add gold to the tips of the pins, just make sure you add another layer of glaze on the tip as well. Here are the finished seahorse skeleton earrings. And I glazed them as well with the mixture. And I'll give you a little tip on how to create the hole if you want to create earrings yourself. Uh, just use a tool like this with the wood attachment. Uh, these are the little clasps I use. You just pinch them together. So you can decide where you would like to hang the earrings from. Pretty simple, just light the end for enough time to really heat up the metal and it goes in real easily and there's your hole. Here I'm going to just add the accent with the gold pen on the corners of the wings and then finish that off with a protective layer of, of just straight glaze. Okay, we're on the home stretch now. So we're going to decide where we'd like to place the holes to insert our pins. I just eye it. And we're going to use the same technique as we did with the earrings, heating up a metal end making a small hole and then I like to make the hole bigger and finish it off with my electric file. I then add a small layer of the gold pen ink and a final layer of glaze. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this video and I would love to get any feedback and see pictures of your projects.